Brakate Hawa, Brakate Hawa Shai, Brakate Hawa, Brakate Hawa Shai, Kalhalalam La, Yahawa Bashem Yahawa Shai, Bashem Raka Kodash, double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Mostone who tell me this truth and who lead as examples to the flock. Citations to the men who are pushing his word sincerely, you know, for that penny a day. And citations and peace also to the men, women, and children whom the Lord has foreordained to receive this truth to the mercy of the sacrifice of Yahweh Shai. Right? This list is inspired you know, through the Spirit by a listen I was watching from the um, the Elder Brother Choir come, you know, I believe the title of the list is um, The Polycrisis is Judgment, uh, something along that line. You know, and in the video, you know, he went into um, the word, the, the etymology of the word polycrisis, you know, and, you know, poly meaning many, and then he went into the word, you know, crisis, you know, and you know, immediately through the spirit, you know, it, it, it sparked me to look back at the phrase or to think back at the phrase, never let a good crisis go to waste, you know, and, and what it truly meant and what it truly means, you know. So this the purpose of this lesson is to to communicate that, you know, to the Akium and a few sisters who listen and hopefully, you know, it's, it's edifying, you know, because after you get a, you get a proper understanding of what a crisis is, then you truly understand the weight, you know, of that phrase, never let a good crisis go to waste, you know. So let's start here in the etymology, the online etymology dictionary, which the word etymology means the study of words, you know, or the study of the root of words, right, or pretty much the study of the truth, you know, the truth of words. All right, so this is crisis. It says, decisive point in the progress of a disease. Also, vitally important or decisive state of things, point at which change must come for better or for worse. And if you notice, every time this statement is uttered, it is uttered in a time where great change is proposed to take place. During the middle of a difficult time, there is some great change that is proposed to take place, a change that would not be possible if things were under normal circumstances. Right? From Latinized form of Greek crisis, turning point in a disease, that change which indicates recovery or death, judgment, result of a trial, selection, to separate, to decide, to judge. So a crisis, which is a difficult time, right, is imposed right, on society in order to promote a change that would not be necessary, or, or sorry, that would not be possible under normal circumstances. So as you can see here, one of the, the, the point that I want, um, the definition that I want to, to highlight is the second one here. Vital, important, or decisive state of things, point at which change must come. All right? So bear that in mind, the point at which change must come. Right, a decisive state of things. Right, so we're gonna get this article here. This article here is from WholeBeingInstitute.com. Right, and the title of the article, I believe it was posted um, sometime during the um, pandemic. It says, "Never let a good crisis go to waste." Ten golden nuggets mined from the pandemic. Right, so it says, "I first heard the phrase." Never let a good crisis go to waste this March in a lecture by Dr. Tal Ben Shahar. Right? He says he was talking about how curiosity and openness help us make the most of what life has to offer. This is one of the intellectual principles of whole being in Reality. Right? So it says, let me go down here. The earliest attribution was the Italian Renaissance philosopher Niccolo uh, Machiavelli. Right? who reportedly said, never waste an opportunity offered by a good crisis. Franklin Delano Roosevelt, so he's going to give examples of different times when it was used throughout history. All right, so that was the first time during Machiavelli's time. All right? Franklin Delano Roosevelt, while not using that specific phrase, made use of its meaning to promote the New Deal. All right? So we can, we can look up the New Deal here. You know, just quickly, you know, I have a, 
basic understanding of what it is, right? So let me just look it up here. So it says the New Deal was a series of programs, public work projects, financial reforms and regulations enacted by President Franklin D. Roosevelt in, in the United States between 1933 and 1939, right? So a lot of changes were made you know to public to the public sector to the economic uh, economic reforms you know regulations a lot of changes were made you know in the united states during the new deal era right which a lot of people didn't agree with a lot of the, the um the things that were done but it was possible to be done because of what the great depression of 1929 right so as you, see, as you can see there was a great crisis here a difficult time where a decision had to be made right and that decision was to what push the new deal use this difficult time this turning point this divisive state of things where change must come right so bear that in mind that this happened in a difficult time as well right <clears throat> let's get back to the article it says it's also attributed to Winston Churchill when he was here this point now when he was working to form the United Nations after World War II. So one of the uh, there are a few major things that happened coming out of World War II, right? One of those was the formation of the United Nations. Then there was the formation of um there's the formation of NATO. There's the formation of the Bretton Woods Agreement, the Bretton Woods system, you know. So um, I think the EU came later, right? If I'm not mistaken, let me. Um, when was the EU formed? Right, 1993. So that was actually much later, right? So it was um, it was NATO, I believe NATO. Right, so NATO was formed in 1949. Then you have the United Nations that was formed a little, around about the same time. Uh, UN, yeah, 1945, right after the um, the First World War, right? And then the Bretton Woods Agreement, Bretton Woods System, July 1944. A new international monetary system was forged by delegates of 44 nations in Bretton Woods, New Hampshire in July 1944, right? Which is right around about the end of the um, the First World War, <clears throat> right? So that crisis, Second World War, right, was used as a catalyst, as a turning point, a divisive state of things where change must come. And that change, those changes led to certain legislation being passed, the United Nations being formed, the Bretton Woods system being formed, and the NATO alliance being formed, right? So, let's move forward. More recently, this phrase was used by former White House Chief of Staff, Ram Emanuel, who said, you never want a serious crisis to go to waste. And what I mean by that is an opportunity to do things that you think you could not do before, right? So under normal circumstances, there are certain legislations, certain changes that the public would resist. But in a time of crisis, in a, st and in a state of div divisiveness, or decisiveness, Salakia, in a state of decisiveness, a state of difficulty, a state of uncertainty, right? Certain legislations, certain changes can be put forward that were never possible when things were in a quote-unquote normal situation. An example that we have is what during the um the pandemic, certain laws that were passed that were not possible before, right? The climate change crisis is also another one that's being pushed, and certain laws are being passed that would never pass under quote-unquote normal circumstances you know so it's a good opportunity to revisit you know the idea of the hegelian dialectic right the problem reaction solution uh, um, system right so this is from the, the, the truthers journal you know published um january 10 2020 
right? It says, um, to better understand the new world order strategy behind the crises we experience, it is important you first understand the problem, reaction, solution, or the Hegelian dialectic from the phil German philosopher, right? It says, it is stated by Heinrich Moritz um, Charlie Baus, however that's pronounced, as comprising three dialectical stages of development. A thesis giving rise to its reaction, right? An antithesis which contradicts or negates the thesis and the tension between the two being resolved by a means of a synthesis, right? David Icke explains the manipulation technique he calls problem-reaction-solution. First, a problem is created and designed to elicit a certain reaction out of the public. Then the people demand something be done about the problem and willingly accept the pre-planned solution. A solution that always involves actions or legislation, listen to this, that never would have passed under normal circumstances. So if we go back to this article here, right, to this quote from the former White House chief of staff, he said, you never want a serious crisis to go to waste. And what I mean by that is an opportunity to do things that you think you could not do before. Right? Going back to this, right? It says, right? A solution that in always involves actions or legislations that never would have passed under normal circumstances. It works like this. The manipulating body covertly creates a problem and then directs the media to incessantly focus on it without recourse. The problem could be anything, a war, financial collapse, a rush of child abductions, or a terrorist attack. The power of the media can create the false perception that, you, that a big problem exists, even if it doesn't. Once you have created the problem, you make sure that an individual, a group, or an aspect of society is blamed. This then rallies the population behind the desperate lunge for a solution to the problem. Something must be done, they cry in unison. The people that created the problem in the first place then come back in and offer the solution that the people demand. Remember, the people screaming for a solution do not know that the problem was artificially created in the first place. The solution to the problem is always further curtailment of freedom and advancement of one or more aspects of the NWO agenda. Whether that is geopolitical expansion, new laws, or implementation of new societal um, worldviews. So I'll post this article in the um, description box so brothers can read it. So hopefully the point, you know, is being made properly, you know, and, you know, brothers understand it. You know, a crisis, I'm going to read the definition again, vital, important, or decisive state of things, point at which change must come. So a crisis is used as a turning point, a, ch a, a point in which change that would not be possible under normal circumstances, be injected into the population. This change, we, we have a, a, an opportunity now to enact this change. Our own prime minister said the same thing during the, um, the pandemic, you know, here in Jamaica. All right, let's get a couple of scriptures. This is Psalm 64. It says, Hear my voice, O Yahweh, in my prayer, preserve my life from fear of the enemy. Hide me from the secret counsel of the wicked, from the insurrection of the workers of iniquity who wet their tongue like a sword and bend their bow and shoot their arrows even bitter words that they may shoot in secret at the perfect suddenly they will shoot at them and fear not they encourage themselves in an evil matter they commune of laying snares privily they say who shall see him they search out iniquities they accomplish a diligent search both the inward thought of every one of them and the heart is deep but Yahweh shall shoot at them with an arrow Suddenly shall they be wounded, so shall they make their own tongue to fall upon themselves, and all that see them shall flee away. All right? We're going to read also Psalm chapter 140. It says, Deliver me, O Lord, Yahweh, from the evil man, preserve me from the violent man, which imagine mischiefs in their heart. Continually are they gathered together for war. They have sharpened their tongues like a serpent. Others' poison is in their lips. If you if you notice, both Psalm 64 and Psalm 140 speak about them wetting their tongue or sharpening their tongues. Right? That's talking about their propaganda, the media, the lies that they put forth to convince people that there is, you know, a real crisis. You know, keep me, O Lord, from the hands of the wicked. Preserve me from the violent man who have purpose to overthrow my goings. That's the solution. The solution is to overthrow your goings. Right? The proud have it a snare for me and cords. Right? 
that snare is the solution to the crisis, right? <clears throat> they have spread a net by the wayside. They have set gins for me. I have said unto the Lord, though at my power, hear the voice of my supplications, O Lord. O Lord, Yahweh, the Lord, right? The, um, the strength of the, my salvation, though has covered my head in the day of battle. Grant not, O Lord, the desires of the wicked, further not his wicked device, lest they exalt themselves. Right, and we know the Lord is not gonna allow his um his his wet dream, you know, to um to come to full fruition. As for the head of those that come past me about, let the mischief of their own lips cover them. Right? Let burning coals fall upon them, let them be cast into the fire, you know, which goes back to the what? The thermonuclear fire. Right? That's gonna uh, um culminate, you know, um World War Three. Let them be cast into fire into the deep pits that they rise not again. Let not an evil speaker be established in the earth. Evil shall hunt the violent man to overthrow him. Alright, so hopefully this lesson was edifying. You know, until next time, shalom.